All right, guys. Three bucks. One day. One day same tree. Same tree. Oh my God. I'm so Woo! Holy oh, shit. Holy shit. <laughs> Get a shot of these. Two farms this year. Number one is done. Did you say bye, Kevin? I did. I already did. Bye, Kevin. Bye, Kevin. Bye, Kevin. Bye, Kevin. Smoke it, Look at that. You destroyed it. The shop is closing up. Make sure he takes all his right handlers. The perfect intro to the Deer Shop podcast is I can hear Dad's tractor, and I'm sure everyone can hear Dad's where tractor it started. in the background. Yeah, where it started. But welcome to the Deer Shop podcast presented by Simon Bars Outdoors and the Leaky John Boat Company. Uh, this is hopefully episode one, depending on how the editing process goes, but this might be the pilot episode of our podcast. It is July 7th, 2023. We are in the Deer Shop. Yes. Doing the first Deer Shop podcast, and it is hot in here. We would much rather be in indoors somewhere. Yes, we would actually. No one wanted to do this but me today. So, yeah, but I begged and pleaded it. and screamed and yelled and got quiet and got mad. But we did it because we are leaving tomorrow morning for the Outer Banks. Our yes. week long traditional shark fishing trip is this upcoming week. 15 people are going. We have a house on the beach and it's going to be awesome we're going to catch some sharks we're going to do some fishing in the sound yes saltwater fishing beaching vacation golfing yeah drinking. relaxing drinking relaxing chilling uh working on podcasts when it rains and editing mm -hmm. videos but we wanted to do this podcast now for a while it's kind of been an idea for six to eight months i mean we've actually wanted to do it for way longer than that but for six to eight months we've been talking about doing it and we bought the equipment maybe three, four weeks ago. Started buying the equipment three, four weeks ago. Um, if anyone doesn't know, obviously, you're watching this on the Simon Brothers Outdoors YouTube channel. Uh, we started that in May of 2009. Yep. So we are at 14 years of making outdoor video and hunting and fishing content. And podcasts have kind of just become another avenue for people to share. And a lot of people listen to them in their cars and... We do a lot of traveling, and when we travel, we listen to a lot of podcasts. And you can tell a lot more of a story through a podcast, I believe, than a video. Yes, for sure. And when it comes to some of the other uh, things you can post a podcast to, whether it be Spotify or Apple or Amazon, it gives you a little bit more leeway to talk about the things you want to talk about, not be yep. just uh, congested to one thing like YouTube is. And we have our video styles. We've... Uh, we put out a couple different styles of videos. We put out full SBO Live episodes, which were on season eight of that show. Um, you know, heavily edited, a lot of music, a lot of, a lot of color grading transitions. We tell big stories throughout the year. You know, we usually have 20 ish episodes a season. Um, and each one is 30 to an hour, 30 minutes to an hour long. Some are a little bit over an hour, but it's tough to go deep into a lot of topics in an episode, even if it's an hour long film per se. You can't really dive deep into everything that you want to dive deep into in that. We do a lot of studio videos lately. We've been doing some product reviews, some unboxings, hosting a lot of episodes here in the studio that we built off the deer shop. The shop's actually through that door. Yeah, and when it comes to YouTube videos, a lot of people just want the meat and potatoes. It's the hunting mm -hmm. footage, Not the whole big story. bucks, yep. traveling. And you got to grab their attention right away. you got to hit yeah. the algorithm if anyone even is going to see it. And, you know, they're judging you on your color you know, they're judging you on the sound and how it looks and how it feels and how music you know, oh, and all that. You know, the music's too loud. Yeah, all that stuff. Too much downtime in a video. Yeah, you guys are sitting around a cabin drinking too much. Well, we yeah. didn't shoot anything. So that's, that's what we do. <laughs> yeah. so, so this platform is going to give us a much broader range to uh, talk about all sorts of things. Obviously, yep. it's going to be centered around deer hunting. That's what we do the most of. It's going to be centered around the deer shop here. Yep. But we are going to get down some rabbit holes and talk about some things and make some videos on some things. And Yeah, I mean, we're going to, I mean, our YouTube channel actually shows a lot of different things. But the things that get viewed the most on our channel are, you know, bow hunting, gun hunting, deer hunting, deer camp. Those like three or four topics and some out-of-state western stuff are where our views go. But we have a lot of fishing stuff. And this podcast is partially, you know, hosted by the Leaky John Boat, which is all fishing and some waterfowl and stuff of that nature. But it's all basically water-based sports and uh, stuff of that nature. And we're going to be able to dive into that a lot deeper in here. Uh, 
Yeah, we'll be able to talk about fishing a lot, which doesn't get talked about too much on the SBO channel, but no, that's what the Leak channel is all about. Lots of good uh, fishing stories and duck hunting stories for sure. Hard to take video of duck hunting, but there's lots of good stories you could talk about and people would like us to like, so yes. that's going to be good. And the huge thing with this podcasting is uh, we're going to be able to get guests on here, people that we've wanted to talk to and people that want to share their stories and share their experiences that might not want to make a full-blown video. Right. Now we're going to be able to have them in here in the podcast studio, sit down, talk to them. So I'm really excited about that aspect of things. We actually do know a lot of people who would love to talk hunting and come into this shop and hang out or, uh, you know, we are acquaintances with, but they're not into the video aspect. They don't like being videotaped. They definitely don't film their hunts, but they still kill some slammer bucks and have some great stories, go on some cool trips. This is an avenue to be able to kind of invite them along. You know, most people are not opposed to sitting around for an hour drinking some beers and having a podcast. So yeah, you can put well, these headphones on. Right. Yeah. And we've been we've been hanging out in this shop for you know 15 years now. I mean, it was we had this little history of the shop. This was Grandma's house. This is the farm, the family farmhouse, Grandma's house. And even when she was still alive, she passed away. 2019. Four years ago. Yeah, yeah, four years ago. Even when she was still alive, we had that part of the butcher shop set up for butcher and deer, and she'd come out and sit with us. Um, you know, we had we've had deer hanging in here for probably since about the beginning of the uh, of Simon Brothers Outdoors. Yeah, we started videotaping for sure. There's some old images we can share of just ha deer hanging. There was junk everywhere, but we've been butchering deer in here for a long time. And after she passed away, the boys ended up moving in, and we did a lot of renovation and construction. We built this, and now we butcher 20, 25 deer a year in here. And, you know, every buck, even if it doesn't get butch butchered in here, every buck that our friends or us kill ends up coming back here for a day or two to hang and then get taken to wherever it Shows going. up here at some point. Yeah, and we, we always celebrate and hang out. Um, We've watched football games in here. We've had cookouts in here, family holidays in here. Bachelor parties. Bachelor parties. Mm -hmm. um, so that's pretty much how we settled on the name Deer Shop Podcast. Wedding parties. Because this is where everything SBO is centered around this deer shop here. So uh, we thought we'd make it an avenue of what we talk about here and sharing that with everybody else. And the cool thing about this podcasting equipment is it's... It's very mobile. Yep. So we'll be able to take this to trout camp with us. We'll be able to take this to deer camp with us. Yeah. You can even film one on the road if you wanted to. Yeah, and we can now also get people mobile, so we can get people on the phone, on FaceTime. We'll be yep. able to have them be a part of our podcast from uh, from wherever they are. We plan on having Isaac actually um, check in once a week or whenever he gets some service and when he's moving spots and do some podcasts potentially. Uh, when he's in Montana and Idaho and out west, wherever he's going this fall, he takes his month hiatus and goes out west. Isaac's going <coughs> to chime in while we're back here at home and yeah. So when I'm moving them on the podcast that way, moving between spots, I'll be able to get on Facetime and uh, do a podcast with the boys, let them know what's going on. We're definitely taking it to deer camp. All the deer camps we go to, um, we're, I'm, we're probably. I, I'm assuming we're going to end up taking it with us this week to to the beach. Yeah, we're going to take it with. We're going to end up sure. doing a bunch of podcasts from our beach house. There's some rain a couple days. And we'll be able to talk about the shark fishing. And there's the guys that we're going with are all deer hunting friends of ours, so we can talk about deer hunting while we're there. You know, if there's one of them is super wanna... excited about the podcast. Yeah, there's yeah. there's some people that are excited about it. Um, there's going to be some regular guests on the podcast for sure, some locals. So if you're a local Medina County person, there's going to be a lot of people on this podcast that you recognize or have known or that are friends of yours or Medina County hunters. Yeah, because they're friends of ours. So we're going to have a lot of local guys. I can't one person I can't wait to get on is Will Disbro. I can't <laughs> wait to get him on. He's just the man, international man of mystery. You know, he's oh, shooting yeah. ducks. He's, yeah. He kills a bear here or there. He, you know, he just caught some 20-pound catfish up on Sandusky Bay. <laughs> they did. I mean, he travels the world for work and hunts and fishes. It's and bored. He's he doesn't joking. videotape any of it, and he doesn't really share much of it on social media, but his stories he has will be... Yeah, when you get those Dizros talking, it's yeah. real good. He's got some really good stories, and he's also a big contributor here to the shop. Um, he doesn't come to the shop parties, but he will show up. Even if we're not here, mostly on a Tuesday. Yeah, he'll show up unannounced and drop off something cool. I'm sure if I look around right now, I could find something that he has dropped off. He's got a boat in the driveway. There's a boat. Yeah, there's a boat in the driveway. You know, there's a Anheuser Busch half keg right there that's empty that he dropped off. Coolers. He just finds stuff and he brings it, and he's got all kinds of cool stories. Fake deer antlers. Yeah. Do we think that's him? I mean, I always thought it was him. It's either yeah, him we or Joey. Can, we can talk about that for a second because it is a huge mystery and we've never mentioned it. Two people it could be in videos. Who do you think it is? Will Disbro? 
Okay. Or Joey Pavlovich, because Drake from Wild Time found one I know, in I, the woods. And I accused Joey of that. So if you don't know what we're talking about, let's back up. Someone, and we've never mentioned in any of our YouTube videos, and it, it's been on Snapchat. No, so, you have. In yeah. your yard. Uh, one may, time. Maybe on a mini soda or something. There's so many videos I forget. But somebody over the last two, three years has been throwing fake like Glendale and, and, you know, Flambeau, white-tailed deer target antlers in our yards here. And I have a box in my house of maybe 50 fake deer yep. antlers. Giant plastic. There's antlers. some ones with drop tines. There's the normal cheap ones. I mean, there's just every style and shape of fake deer antler you could ever imagine has wound up in this yard and in my yard at my house. The snow melts. I just find three or four antlers underneath the snow. And, and I will say, ones in the, yard. the first time we found one, I walked out the front door and I thought it was a giant shed in the front yard. <laughs> And I walked up to it, and I'm like, what in the world is going on here? Someone just pitching them out their windows right in our yard. And we know it's someone messing with us. Uh, eventually, we'll figure out who it is. But I've never been able to actually have anyone fess up to it. But I think Will Disbro worked for McKenzie Targets, I think. Or yeah. he worked we, for one of the Targets. We think covers. maybe so he, he has a, a direct line to that kind of thing. We're but. pretty sure he has a garage full of them. So that he's the most likely culprit. But then also we have the Wild Time Boys, which they're a bunch of teenagers that do the same thing as us. So. They're not yeah. teenagers anymore. They were um, when they started. They, they were when they started. Yeah, well, they they're 20 years started. old, and we're 30 years old. Yeah. So they're younger than us. They'll be on the podcast from time to time, too. Yeah. Um, there actually is a deer antler sitting right here that Dad found within sight of this shop. Well, this one was a real deer antler that he found. Yeah, that's actually this one is actually a true antler, and Dad found that. If I look through the window, Dad found it within sight of where we're sitting. And then I end up killing this buck, and there's a whole great story about that. But sometimes we do find real antlers within sight of the shop. So from it's not, the tractor, right? Yeah. No, he was walking. Oh. He had he had a he had hair up his ass, trying to find an antler because he had never found one before. Yeah, he's 63 years old, yeah. lived on this farm his entire life, and this is the first shed he's found. And he found it within sight of the shop, and he does wear glasses. He's blind. Yeah. He then I blind. killed him. And then Caleb killed him, and that's the story of Dad's buck. Yeah. That's how he got the name. Yep. Obviously, you can check out those videos. I'll link it. But I guess we go around real quick and kind of introduce ourselves. There's going to be a lot of people listening who might not know who we are because they stumble across it while searching for a deer hunting podcast. So we'll give a brief history. Um, yeah, we'll start with who you are and uh, what you like to do most when it comes to uh, the channel or your channel, separate channel. So I'm Caleb, Caleb Simon. Uh, I'm the oldest of the Simon brothers. I just turned 33 last week. Um, I always kind of got my finger in one of the avenues of the content that we're doing. Um, I do most of the video editing. Um, for a while there, I was not doing most of the killing, and then I was doing most of the killing, and then I kind of went back to not doing most of the killing. And I had a stretch. I had a real good stretch, and it's been a little bit dry after that. But Yeah, not much killing this year, huh? No, my West Virginia buck, which is on the wall right over there, is the only buck I killed last year. Which it was the biggest buck we killed in West Virginia. It was. So. It was That's something. Big, it was the biggest West Virginia buck, so... <clears throat> Uh, yeah, I mean, deer hunting is my thing, filming deer hunting, turkey hunting. So it's deer hunting, turkey hunting, and shed hunting. Those are my three things. Uh, I'm very involved with all the, you know, the habitat management here on the farm and a couple of our other farms. Um, I, I take care of most of the trail cameras for our group of people and do most of the food pine for our group of people, as Isaac announced. Yeah, uh, right Caleb runs trail message. cameras for like five other people, including us. We Are actually you? have a third YouTube channel, the Trail Camera yes, Collective, yes. where we share all that stuff. Um, that's an only trail camera website or YouTube channel, Instagram. It's you, You'll never see humans. You'll never hear humans. It's only trail camera footage, and it's from three or four different states and a whole bunch of different farms up here. I never give away locations, but it's that's where all our trail camera media from all over the years is, is shared. But It's just pure wildlife trail camera yep. videos and pictures. Yep. So there's nothing hunting related on there. Nope. Because there is quite a few people and quite a few pages that follow it that aren't hunters. They just like seeing the uh, wildlife. Mm-hmm. It's a wildlife-only page, but like I said, I do most of the video editing. Um, I'd say about nine. I do 99% of SBOs, and then Luke does all his leaky video editing. Actually, <coughs> Luke does a lot of video editing. Um, I'm going to work on the video portion of this podcast, and then I think Isaac's going to work on the audio portion of this podcast. Isaac and Ethan are going to kind of split those duties. Yeah, so we're going to see how that goes. But but yeah, I mean, uh, I like to drink Bush Light. Uh, I got a dog at home named Rody and a wife. That lets me do all this stuff whenever I want, which is cool. And um, I just live, eat, and breathe the outdoors. Uh, a lot, mostly local, uh, the tri-state kind of area that like we do: Indiana, Ohio, Pennsylvania, West Virginia. Deer hunting is like my thing that I really love. 
four states, yeah. Yeah, Caleb stays within 200 miles of home. Yep, yep. I have been out west traveling a couple times. I did go on a bear hunt this year out to Montana with Isaac for 16 oh, yeah. days, which is going to be a very large podcast and video series that we will get to later in the spring. Yeah, after deer season. Yeah, so that's going to be not for a while, but we did have an epic 16-day bear hunt that I did go out west for. But, um, yep, that's kind of my background. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I could add in real quick. I'm sure more things will come to me. Yeah, Caleb's the thoughts and brains behind everything. Also, Medina County Hunters. You can probably talk. Yeah, about so that. Medina County Hunters is a. It was a nonprofit organization. Um, they donated a lot of money for hunting causes. It's just a local. It started as like a Facebook group, and then we kind of became a little club. And um, you know, I think we're at like 1,300 members now yeah, on big. the page. But it's for local hunters. It's a good resource. It's no longer a 503c c3. It's no longer nonprofit. Um, there was a guy I was working with, Gene Miller, that helped me with that kind of stuff, and we did a lot of good stuff, but it became a lot, and we kind of moved past that. But the page still is there, and we hold a big buck contest every year and stuff. But So you hear us reference that from time to time, and a lot of our audience might be from that group. Um, that was a big part of our lives, and still kind of is. When yeah, it's definitely. It's the, it's the local hub for outdoor news and activity, I guess. But, yeah, that's me. Cool. All right, we'll move on to me. I'm Isaac. Oh, and we're all firemen, too, by the way, besides well, Luke. Besides Luke was a fireman. Luke was a fireman, too. Yeah, so I'm a career fireman. fireman. Isaac's a career fireman. Ethan, we'll get to Ethan. He'll, he'll tell his story, but he's in, in the process of becoming a career fireman. So, And Luke's retired. That's why the here. logo is a Maltese cross. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's talk about the logo for a second. Yeah. I made the logo on Microsoft <laughs> Paint, I think, probably when I was like 14, I would yeah. think. It's been, been like a long time. And we never change anything about it. Yeah, so that's been the logo. Found a bunch of images on Google and started dry, drawing stuff on Microsoft Paint or Draw or whatever the old program was on Windows Vista, probably. Yeah. So that's how the logo came about. But uh, I'm Isaac. I'm the second oldest. And pretty much all I do is travel out west to hunt. Yeah. So I started doing that three years ago, thanks to some buddies, and uh, never really looked back. Got a big year planned this year. When it comes to the Western videos, Caleb helps me a little bit. He helped me that first year, but last year I started taking over myself, and uh, we had some success with those videos, and I've yeah. had some success out there, hoping for more success this year. And a couple mule deer and a bear, right? Yeah, two mule deer and a bear so far out west. All all uh, DIY style, so all your hunting yeah. out west yeah. is DIY. We should talk about that. It's all done on public ground, and it's all do-it-yourself, no guides, no anything like that. Just kind of out there cutting my teeth, trying to figure it out for myself. My one buddy Jay, he uh, he's the one that kind of introduced me to it, and I've been out there with Dylan too, and we got a big year planned this year. A couple guys that'll be on the podcast regularly. You guys will hear from them. Oh yes, for sure, a lot. Jay's going to be an interesting character on the show. He has his role. Yeah, he will definitely be interesting. So I pretty much that's what I do. I travel to hunt, and I hate turkey hunting, and I'll end with that. <laughs> but I make him go with me all the time. He's been running camera turkey hunt for me. You actually killed a gobbler before I did. By the way, yeah, I've killed and that's a how this all started. Yeah, well, this all started with the turkey hunt where I missed with my bow and Isaac blew his head off with a shotgun. And that's yeah, in 2006. Yeah, that was our first uh, f- filmed oh, 2005, hunt. 2005, maybe 2005. Yeah, maybe our, our first, first filmed hunt. hunt. I yeah. shot a turkey when I was 12 years old. And Isaac hates turkey hunting, but he hunt turkey hunts a lot because I always make him go with me. Yeah, and I usually the have the camera. Shot one a few years ago, but uh. You really shot one when the Jay missed with his bow, too. Yes. So my two turkey kills have both been follow-ups. He's a cleanup. You shot a Jake with your bow once in the fall. In the fall, yeah. Yeah. For fun. But For he's fun. filmed a lot of turkeys getting killed, too, so. So, yeah, that's me. Uh, we'll go to Luke. We'll go to the leaky John Boat yeah. himself. So I'm Luke. my name's Luke, and I'm the third oldest brother. I also hate turkey hunting. <laughs> I think I went one time this year with Ethan. <laughs> on yep. the first day and then last year i went one time with caleb love film someone shooting a turkey right next to us yeah you yeah but that was right <laughs> yeah. i fish a lot like considerable yeah. amount much every more day these guys yeah, yeah almost every, every day and he's able to it's funny when you get us all in this group setting like right now luke's kind of reserved and he's quiet and he doesn't really want to be here and he wants to go take a nap and he's talking but you put a gopro in his hand and a fishing pole he'll make a thousand videos and talk for hours by himself just trucking around waters here in northeast ohio so i fish a lot and i <laughs> duck hunt a lot and none of these guys have isaac's gone one time with me we went goose hunting early season and we didn't see a single goose. i saw a crow i think 
So that kind of ruined it for Isaac. But I we shoot we shoot a lot of geese. I uh, hate duck hunting. Do some duck hunting on the boat. Hate it. Hunt swamps and stuff like that here in Northeast Ohio. Hunting Lake area a few times. Not really much video from duck hunting. Yeah, we haven't done a legitimate video it's in very hard. I would like to. I'd like to get a cool. I'd like to make a cool goose hunting video, you know. It just takes a lot of people and time to do a yeah. goose hunting video. And you got to be lucky, too. Most of the time we go hunting, we don't really kill anything, so. There's a big problem with that season is during deer season, and we're still deer yeah, hunting. Yeah, that's also like, another huge problem is yeah. everyone's deer hunting. But I deer hunt quite a bit, I would say. Yeah. I shoot one or two does a year. It's been like 10 years since I shot a buck. Yeah. Take two the last long. buck you shot was a buck that you said you told no one to shoot. And then you shot him on deer drive. I shot that one with a gun. <laughs> but, but the, the last buck on film was that seven point, which... Yeah, yeah, I did shoot a seven point on film with my bow. We got to get that out here. It's just sitting on a shelf inside. We need to yeah. bring it out here and get it, get it displayed. And we can look up that... Vi- there is a video. Yeah, I'll get, I can find that video. I'll splice that video in. For sure. You Yeah, that was... You were really into deer hunting then. Yeah, I was. I, I deer hunted a lot. Luke's good for a couple does on film early season every year. We can always start our every year. There's going to be like an early season hunting video. We're filming bucks from really far away, and then there's a video, a couple of videos of Luke just whacking does with multiple camera angles. He's really good at that. Yeah, he shoots three does till October 10th, and then uh, does yep, the hunting again until January. Yep, yep, and he quits until late season. They, yeah, the they neighbors kill a deer. Then I yeah. shoot another doe in January. Yep, so. yep. one of these years we'll get him to hunt the whole year, and he'll shoot a slammer. Well, Luke, I'm hunting Luke's property this year, so Luke actually has killed the biggest buck. Of well, the yeah, we could talk yeah, about, that about that briefly. About that, yeah, we're, we're probably really, going to do an entire podcast. Yeah, we don't really talk oh, about that. It'll be a huge podcast on that. But yeah, Luke's killed the biggest. Luke's killed like what is it? Style the eleventh. Yeah, something. is it not in the top ten anymore? I don't for, think it's for in the top a period. 10 it was top ten biggest deer ever killed in Medina County. It was like seventh at it one point. Still may be yeah. close to the top 11th. for youth, I would think. Yeah, it's it's in the top. It's one of the. It's probably one or two for youth. Yeah, I think it's number two for yeah, you. Yeah, and if people don't know, we have a, it's almost a 200-inch deer yeah. hanging in the house. And it was killed 200, 200 yards from here? Yeah, maybe. It was 250 like, yards from where we were sitting on the farm. Yeah. Great story. But that was back when we weren't videotaping heavy, uh, 2009. <coughs> we did have some You honey- do have some video of it, actually. Yeah, we have. Before. Yeah, there's, uh, the year before, I had him at 30 yards, full draw, crappy tape video camera. Handheld. Handheld. And it was on a tree arm, though. But I didn't... Uh, I didn't take the shot because it was chasing does, and he went in some brush, and I just, you know, I pushed out, basically, and didn't take the it shot. It was a mature there. decision. The shed's up there. That's the drop tine hanging It was a mature here. decision. Found the, found the shed that year, and then the deer went MIA. That deer was really well known that year. Um, a lot of locals had pictures of that year, and then the deer went MIA for the most part. Um, no one really, you know, there was some fleeting trail camera pictures, and, you know, this is 2009, so this is back before cell cams and major social media like we had like myspace back then i think you know yeah most of us were still in high school yeah so i had just graduated and i was 13 years old. luke killed him uh sunday at gun season while i was watching yep. packers football i'm a huge packers fan it's like the only thing i'll ever skip deer hunting for is watch packers game and i skipped deer hunting to watch packers game and luke killed a 200 inch buck with a uh, mossberg 500 200 yards from where we're sitting with a mossberg 500 so we'll have a whole yeah there'll be a whole that that's a whole episode series, yeah. <clears throat> But yeah, that's you know we always kind of forget about that. But yeah, that, I guess happened. that was a long time that ago. That really so. happened. I think yeah. that's it for me. I'm a tool and die maker, not a fireman anymore. <laughs> but I was never really a full time fireman. I was just volunteer. So, uh, and he's on first shift finally. Yeah, after nine years, nine, nine years, years, and he's next always week, tired. So. He's always had a like a either third or second or third shift job. So he's always been only available to do stuff in the mornings and the weekends. But now Luke has a normal. First shift job. Yep. And can be on all our videos from now until ever. Yep. Which is good. All right, Trash. All right. <laughs> yep. Ethan, youngest of the Simon brothers. Um, goes by Trash. Mom used, calls him trash. By trash. They still call me <laughs> Our trash. Our mom even calls him Trash. That's because you have four generations of hand down, hand me downs, everything. <laughs> Just happens. It's but, uh, kind of what happens, yeah. I love turkey hunting. I went to three different yeah. states this year for turkey hunting, and I didn't kill. Hell yeah. So there, there's that. It's all right. Did you, know, you, you were there when a Kentucky bird was yep. killed, running camera. And we were close in Pennsylvania. Very close in Pennsylvania. And there's no turkeys in Ohio. Well, there was. They were just there much was. Me and Isaac saw them five times this year. Me and Isaac, me, I, had fi- I had two gobblers in range five different times this year. I work a regular first shift job, so I can't yeah. go turkey hunting on a Monday or Tuesday like these guys can. Yeah, we don't have real jobs, so... But when you're filming hunts and only killing turkeys on film because the turkey population is kind of down, so I wasn't just going to be trying to kill turkey for the hell of it. I wanted it perfectly on film. I never pulled the trigger. 
<laughs> I haven't been in the YouTube channel that much because I was in the Navy for six years. I just recently moved home yep. seven months ago. But I'm real excited to get into the mobile hunting. I'm going to go out of state a lot for deer hunting this year by myself, DIY. Kind of like Isaac, just shorter trips, Pennsylvania, Kentucky. I might go with you to Pennsylvania. Indiana. Actually, I might go. I'll try to go with you on all of them, but we'll see yeah. how that works and out. And they hate the fact that I want to get a saddle and try that out. Yeah, we're tree stand hunters, so we have not gone. We're not in the newest fad of saddle hunting. I know anyone listening to this podcast is going to be like, wow, you guys really are old school. Yeah, which we haven't quite. I'm open to it, and it's kind of weird because we actually repel a little bit professionally, like with our job. I repelled yesterday off a cliff, 40-foot cliff. Yeah, so we <laughs> should be more yeah. comfortable with it. We just can't give up the stands, especially when it comes to filming. But I'm going to try it. Yeah. I'm going to break that boundary for us this year. And they say once you try it, you never go back. We'll see. I just, they love, say that about a lot I just of love hanging a tree stand in the woods and just having my setup. But, but yeah, being that's... able to sit there, stand up, turn around. That's me, just get, getting excited to get back. Yeah, Ethan's kind of, uh, you know, he's hunted and fished a lot. Oh, sneeze. Yeah, we're good. He's hunted and fished a lot, but uh, it's always just been sporadic. So, like, oh, he gets, you know, he gets to come home and hunt turkeys for two days or, you know. You're hunting for a week. Yeah, that kind of thing. So he's going to be able to have a full year of just doing whatever he wants hunting-wise. And- so, yeah, that's us. Why don't we take just a few minutes to talk about what we're going to do this year, kind of like a big overview Okay. Because obviously we'll be talking about this as it goes along, but if we want to give a big overview, and we're starting tomorrow with going to the Outer Banks. So tomorrow we uh, we leave for the Outer Banks. Yeah. Yeah. Tomorrow's the day for Leaky. Yeah. yeah so like we're doing a big, th- this upcoming week is a Leaky trip. It's going to be, it's all about the Leaky job boat this week. Um, we have four or five surf fishing videos on this Simon Brothers Outdoors channel, but we really going to slam out that content for the leaky. Simon Brothers Outdoors is going to have some videos too, but we're going to do some podcasts. And and those videos did do good in the past, so hopefully this year it's just as good, and hopefully it's kind of a launching point for the leaky. And That's the plan. His YouTube channel is growing, and hopefully it grows some more in this whole apparel thing. We're all wearing mostly leaky stuff. So. I'm not. I'm actually wearing Guggen Squad stuff, oh. which is like, if you're a fisherman, you know this is yeah. like... And I just wearing a meat eater. Yeah, I'm sure. wearing a meat eater. Stephen so. Yeah, so That's that's cool. That's a good yeah, idea. we're fine with that. We have we're, the biggest hunting social media and the biggest fishing social media on. Yeah, I guess yeah. we do. Yeah. And the smallest own. hunting <laughs> and fishing <laughs> social media right. on the... We're going to combine fishing. them. They don't know it yet. Yeah, yeah one yeah. day we'll be on that podcast, so... Or they'll be on ours. Yeah, they'll be on ours. They're listening. I know they are. All right, so anyways, we're going to North Carolina. We're doing a bunch of fishing. Just like I said, vacations, golfing, blah, blah, blah. We come back from that, and uh, it's pretty much full-blown deer mode after that. Yeah, we have a week of the Medina County Fair where we are going to be – we have a booth in the new outdoor exhibit. So there's an outdoor section of the Medina County Fair this year in the community center for any of the locals watching. We have a booth for Simon Bros Outdoors and Leaky John Boat, but then we're also running the – mount display and probably helping jason with a bunch of shit to be honest with you um and when caleb says we he's just the caboose behind Simon Brothers that door so he's running it yeah. yeah and actually mom i think mom she i'm pretty sure mom's gonna be at the fair every day in that exhibit either helping us or jason so she needs it mama simon will be there uh, for all of it probably and then we'll be there most days but you can come stop by the booth we i would like to do a podcast at the fair and this yeah. is the but, first time we'll be selling anything in person, in the person. Public. yeah. So we've done like private sales of this kind of stuff, but our store's dropship. Luke can explain yep. this a little bit more. But so our store is through Shopify, and like, say you go on the leakyjobboatcompany dot com and you order a shirt, I'll get a notification, and like all the stuff on there is stuff I've designed or we put together together, and they take care of it. Like you guys will buy it, pay for it, and then it'll get shipped to your house within like seven to ten days. And just go straight through them. Nothing's here at the shop or at the house. It's just all manufactured yeah, it's somewhere all, else. It's all drop shipping. And this this really helps the smaller businesses, I guess, like Luke's, really start off. And uh, hopefully one day it's big enough to where we can move to having an inventory. And you don't really make a profit off of it either, do you? No, most of the stuff it just like covers like the monthly bills it takes to do it. But like, yeah. say you buy a t-shirt, I think I make two bucks. Yeah. Or a hat, I don't know if I make anything. More brand hat. recognition. Than yeah, it's, just, it's yeah. a startup and it uh, hopefully helps launch this and launch his youtube channel and uh, plus it gives us a bunch of cool stuff to wear that luke designed himself so that is also cool we want to get a new hunting line out so we're trying to get luke to design we'll talk about some stuff this week but 
a hunting lineup of clothing would be. Yeah, we're going to push for that being available in September. So, Luke, yeah. you got some work to do, and we'll help. Yeah, we got yep. some ideas to bring up. So, yeah, Medina County Fair, if you want to see us hang out, we will be there. Um, there'll be there will be some stuff to buy in person, like you said, and we'll just we'll be giving away stickers, and there'll be QR codes and yep. that kind of. Yeah, thing. and we'll have some videos playing. We'll have some of our taxidermy yep. there. Yep. So that should be cool. Getting to see a lot of the public that we don't normally see. And then after that, so the next thing after that, besides you know we got fall food plots here at the farm, and I got to get some in Southern Ohio is Isaac. Spending a whole month yeah, out west, yeah, my the entire big, month. Of my September. big trip is coming up, and uh, I think I'm going to do a whole podcast on that right, right before I leave. But I'll just say that I'm leaving late August. I have four tags in my pocket, and I'll be back in October. So I'll be archery hunting for mule deer, elk, black bear, and uh, antelope. I drew an antelope tag as well. So we'll see how this goes. It's going to be an adventure. Meeting a couple different guys, right? Yeah, I'm going out with Dylan, probably meeting up with Jay, doing some solo hunting, doing some vacationing at the end. So mm-hmm. that should be super cool. Cool. And then, uh, yeah, do you need to fix yeah, your Yeah, do you need to pause? And- do we need to pause? No, you guys can keep going. We'll just keep talking while Isaac fixes his mic. Um, then while Isaac's gone, we'll be getting ready for deer season. Ethan's going to, it sounds like Ethan's going to spend some time in Kentucky. He had, a, he had a, he bought tags in Kentucky for turkey, so he's got a deer tag. Mm-hmm. Uh, he might do some early season. Me and Dylan, hopefully. Hopefully I can drag him down there. Yeah. Might do some early season. He can also go on his own yep. and try to do the solo thing. It's the best way to learn this kind of hunting is to just go out and do Back. it. So, um, Ethan's probably going to be in Kentucky. Um, I'm definitely going to do some scouting for Indiana in September. Uh, hopefully we're recording a lot of podcasts. Isaac will be gone, but we'll be able to record a lot of podcasts in August and September to kind of get it rolling. Our plan is to have every a podcast released at like 6 a.m. on Monday morning. That's about what I think the perfect time to release mm-hmm. our podcast. So we're trying to have every week, Monday morning, a new podcast to listen to when you drive to work. So, Well, yeah, and let's talk about we're trying to film every single one so we can release them on YouTube. Yep. But we're also working on trying to get the RSS feed and all that so we can release them to Spotify, yep. Amazon, Apple, all those the podcasting channels that people listen to, like in their phone or in their car on their phone, yep. stuff like that. And I don't know if we're going to do them simultaneously or if the YouTube one's going to launch in the evening. Yeah, the YouTube one might be end up being like a Monday evening thing. Like every Monday evening will be a YouTube video. And some of the live. YouTube ones may be slightly shorter. Yeah, and they're gonna have uh, they're gonna have some video clips yep. spliced into them, so they're gonna be something more that you can watch than just listen to. So you can see everything we're talking about. Yeah, so. we're gonna try to do everything like in every every time that we podcast, we're gonna try to do some type of like in studio setting. So if you're on if you're watching it on YouTube, not only can I splice the hunting footage that we're speaking about or this topic that we're speaking about, but I can also you'll be able to see us and um, we're going to be hosting from a couple different places. We'll definitely do them here. We'll do them in the shop here a lot, especially in the fall. We'll have everything ready to go for when, you know, deer gets killed or we come in from hunting, we can do a quick podcast. Um we're going to do them in my basement. So my basement's like 86% done construction-wise, but it's... And it's um, one mile that way. Yeah, it's one mile from here, and it's the ultimate man cave. That's where we're going to have a lot of... We'll be doing a lot of stuff probably. We'll probably record podcasts on Sunday prior to watching football, I would assume, because yep. I'm going to have... There's always people coming over to my house for football, and I built a man cave specifically for that. Um, nothing's been released on that, but I'm definitely... I'll show that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, just splice videos. it in. Yeah, we'll... As progress is being made, and then... Um, we'll go mobile with it. We're going to take it places, but we can always record just like we are now when we go mobile. We yeah. have. And just to reaffirm, this is called the Deer Shop Podcast, yep. and it's going to include everything you talk about in a deer shop, not only deer hunting. So yep. we're going to be talking about sports. We're yep. going to be talking about fishing. It's it's going to be everything. It's just... I mean, we might hurts. talk about politics a little bit from time to time, and we're not going to get crazy with it. You know, it depends on which whiskey drink. Yeah, because of our jobs. Yeah, if you haven't noticed behind us here, we we do drink a lot of whiskey. Not today. we got a trip tomorrow, but... Yeah. Yeah, it depends on how late the night goes and how uh, how many guests we have and what guests we have. Yep. And it's not, you know, not that there's any no such thing as a children's podcast, but uh, it's really not going to be a kid's podcast. Uh, we are, you know, we, how do I say this properly? Like, we're, it's going to be adult talk in the shop, basically. Yeah. I mean, you're going to hear swear words. And I think I'm going to get a timer that counts down from 15 minutes, so you can't say... Oh, we're at 30 minutes, so you can't say fuck before. <laughs> <laughs> Man, Isaac with the first fuck, just so you know. Caleb did not say the fuck on the board. 
Yeah, we just want to make sure everybody knows where we're at with that. I mean, we're going to be realistic with it. If you've hung out with us in your local, you know how it is. You know Speaking how we are. of boards, we need to clear that one off in the shop. Yeah, we will. The kill board. Yep. We already got we got to add turkey hunting and bear hunting on well, there. None of us killed a turkey. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> kicked our ass. Not as much as the bears kicked our ass. But yeah, but we'll talk about topic that for another later podcast. Date. Yeah. Uh, so after so, September... It's uh, October October's season. Yeah. Big October. time deer season. We'll, we'll be a lot doing early season deer hunting here. Yep, yep. Um, in Ohio, our first deer season trip will probably be Indiana. We might sneak down to West Virginia at Gore Camp. Do we want to yes. talk about that or no? We yeah, we can talk bit. about it a little bit. Um, because we are excited for Indiana. Yes. So last year Super we did. Excited. Last year was our third year, third, third year hunting Indiana public land. And but we did. Uh, it was the first time that we got a group of other YouTubers and uh, people together. It was Born Again Outdoors or Born Again Bow Hunting and Wild Time TV. Um, Luke, kill that. That'll fly. be a good cut. That'll, That'll be a good I intro sound. I think I heard it, and I think it's gonna be Definitely good. Heard it <laughs> uh, so we had a public land YouTube meetup, and we had a lot of fun. Uh, two bucks were killed. Another one was hit. Uh, I didn't see a single deer. But it was a great week. It was. It was I was in Spain. It was a ton of fun. Yeah, Ethan was in Spain. Isaac killed a really nice buck. The mount for it's the the part of the mount's right there. He's doing a pack mount, and one of the guys that was there is actually mounting it for him. But this year we're going a lot bigger. Uh, we don't. I'm not going to list off the guest list yet. I should say the participants, but it's shaping up to be some big time participants. Born again bow hunting is doing it again. It doesn't sound like Wild Time's going to be able to make it. They bummer. might. I might talk to them and try to find we'll, a way we'll to get, get them, them sure. to come. But um, there's some other groups that are coming <sighs> that are bigger social media than we are, and it should just be a lot of fun. We're going back to the same cabin, same area, and and I'm going finally. And Ethan's going, yeah, and we might have years. a couple. We actually might have a couple more guys from our crew going too. It sounds like so. So we'll have five days of Indiana public land hunting. Lots of e scouting. Lots of preparation going into this. Yeah. And Caleb uh, said he's probably going to make a trip out there to do some boots on the ground scouting. Yep. And I know, so Born Again and Wild Time went up earlier than us last year. Born Again's already been back scouting. We're not really labeling it as a as a contest or challenge because it's, it is unfair that some of us have been in this area before. But we do love the idea of just getting together as a group, meeting up and hunting and sharing camp for a week. Yeah. So uh, it's not an official competition, yeah. but obviously More anytime. of a meetup, like a meetup, like a deer camp. Yeah, and anytime, deer camp. anytime a bunch of people get together, there's going to be some sort of competition. Egos will be on. ruined. So, there's going to yeah. be a lot of podcasting going on. We might even have multiple podcasts going on at the same time that week. A combination I know of one. Born Again is going to be podcasting every night. We'll probably set up outside and be podcasting often. There's another podcast. There's at least one other podcast that's coming and hunting. So they'll be podcasting, plus the YouTube videos. So. Wild Time never released a YouTube video from Indiana. I wonder why. Uh, yeah, I guess. We had a three-parter. They released none. Born Again had a two-parter, right? Yeah. Which ours, a two-parter. I liked our videos. They didn't get that much traction. Your hunting, your your buck kill was, did okay. But maybe when uh, deer season gets a little closer, maybe yep. they'll ramp back up again. Yep. Because everybody knows how the uh, YouTube analytics are odd. Yeah. Not everyone. I don't. It don't make sense. It's, it's a giant yeah, it's mystery. It's definitely weird. And anybody in the business knows that it's a giant mystery. I'll tell you, mystery. Right now is our best non deer season analytics we've ever had, but our latest videos have all been very bad. So it's historical videos right now are getting watched at an all time rate. New videos aren't getting watched at all. Which is interesting. I guess I'm not mad about that, but it's weird that old videos are ramping up right now more so than they ever have. But and it's going to be very interesting come deer season whether our new, new videos content, yeah. ramp up or not, or if they don't. So we'll see. We are our first hundred thousand video. I gotta check. It might have it probably might have, tomorrow. I checked it yeah, today. Well, did you check it today? Our tomorrow first hundred thousand video might be tomorrow. So we deer camp finally cross it tomorrow. Yep, ninety nine thousand seven fifty seven. Last year's deer camp in West Virginia, Camp Gore, our favorite place to hunt in the world, almost at a hundred thousand. It's also going to be a place where we definitely do some podcasts down there. Yeah, we'll be doing a lot of podcasts from down there. I would love to get down there this summer prior to the bow season, and I would love to get down there in November and bow hunt, uh, late October, November, bow hunt. So when we get back from Indiana, Isaac needs another beer there, guy. When we get back from Indiana, it's going to be the Wild West. So I don't work in the fall, so I'll be avail available to do a lot of different things. Isaac's off sort of, kind of here and there. Yeah, here and there. But I want to hunt West Virginia with archery equipment before gun season. I want to get to Pennsylvania while bear season's still intact. 
You know, we might be going back to Indiana. I mean, there's going to be a lot of things happening early November. Early November is going to be out of control. Uh, we're going to be all over the place, everywhere, uh, multiple states. I mean, just people are going to be coming and going. It's going to be it's going to be the Wild West in early November. Yeah, and that's pretty much it's our favorite time of year to hunt. We don't kill a lot of bucks in early November. No, we we, we make a lot of content. We see a lot of deer, but we kill our deer late season or gun season, right around there. Um, we've killed some. I, I, my two best archery bucks are October twenty eighth and November first, but. Um, we definitely kill a lot of deer during gun season. Gun season around here, so then when December rolls around, gun season around here is major. Um, every year our gun season video does well. We get guys together at this shop. We, we're cooking breakfast in here. We're doing deer drives. We're doing stand hunting. We got just friends everywhere. Spend the night. I mean, it's gun pretty much around like here a, is a good time. Pretty much a week long vacation that yep. we spend at home. So yep. it is. We have a home farm deer camp, is what we call it every yep. year. Yep. Then the week before that's when we go to Camp Gore in West Virginia. So we do the Thanksgiving week is West Virginia's opener, and we're down there for, you know, five to seven days just having the time of our life. And those videos are truly our best videos, oh, metrics-wise. I mean, it's not even it's close. It's like four of the top five videos are yeah, from, are from down there. It's just so much fun. But then uh, pretty much after that, it's just uh, slow rolling into the late yeah, season. Recovery, which, getting back into work, and then late season hunting, which – our late season hunting is actually always pretty good. Everyone gets there's always a good encounter with a mature buck or a mature buck killed late season around here every year. Last year we killed three. We had three kills late season for us. One was not mature, and that was well. Yeah, we had Nick's buck, we had Isaac's buck, we had your buck. <laughs> Isaac's buck's on the wall over there, super mature. Nick's buck was probably a four year old, maybe a five year old, four year old. Ethan's buck was a two and a half year old. But I got the free pass. <laughs> yeah, his first buck. It was and, his uh, first buck, yeah. First time really deer hunting in the past six or seven years. So He, he might have been pass. three, probably two and a half or three. Who knows? It's hard to tell age. The more we – I do a lot of reading on QDMA and uh, a lot of these research places, and the more they write, the more it's harder to judge. Everyone always assumes that the 100-inch – eight points a two-year-old but we're there's starting to be more literature that that might not necessarily be true so unless a deer has a redeeming quality like a missing leg or a short snout or missing an ear or some physical feature telling the age of a deer is pretty tough yeah we'll, we'll get I was, into that I, I was actually thinking about um fat bastard that buck that we there's a whole bunch of sheds back here yeah we don't know how old he was when he showed up, I just we just assumed he was three because he's like a hundred and thirty inch eight point, real nice. But I mean, in reality, he could have about been it, five. He could have already been five, and that's why he disappeared because he died at nine. You know, he was just a mature buck that I saw from stand twice in four years of hunting. I saw him from stand twice. I mean, that's a lot. I mean, we got him on camera every night for four years, and we have say that we have endless amounts of stories to tell. Yeah, but uh, I think we could probably. Wrap this up. I don't know if we're yeah, we talk about this is our introduction. Yeah, I think this would be a good intro. Yeah, I think it actually turned out pretty well. It did. We wanted to go 45 minutes. We're at 43. Yeah, so. this is going to be episode one, sounds like. Yeah. Next episode, more than likely, is going to be coming to you from North Carolina at the Outer Banks. And we'll have some guests on, probably. And the topic will either be deer hunting or fishing. If we're catching fish, we'll be talking about fishing. If we're not catching fish, we'll be talking about deer hunting. We'll be catching fish, so... Luke we've promises. had good trips down, and we've had bad trips down, so we're hoping for a good trip. It's our first time all on vacation together in five years. Yeah. Yeah. Since Virginia Beach, since the first one, catching sharks. Ethan uh, cousin Keith texted me yesterday. He, he called me, and I didn't answer. I told him I was at work. He texted me back. He says, you're not taking your mom to the beach. <laughs> terrible <laughs> Yeah, son. we're catching a lot of flat. You're terrible, <laughs> son. Mom has always come on our beach trips, but we... We do love our mother. Oh, we love our mother. She's going on her own vacation. She's going on her vacation. We wanted okay. to do, for anyone listening still at this point, we wanted to do one trip with all our girlfriends and wives and whatever and her friends without mom one last time before we became super adults and all started having kids. And So this is like the send-off to our youth trip is what this is, yeah. basically. Yeah, pretty much. So with things Some of might us get, might die. Yeah, yeah. It might get crazy. Yeah, it's going to be yeah, good time. And we haven't come up with any sort of fancy outro or question or anything, but... Yeah, I mean, I know Born Again has their question, but, you know, I don't think we had to have a... I don't think we had to have a standard outro, but we got the intro set up, which is going to... You guys have already seen it, so... Yeah. We, we collaborated on that for a few days, came up with it. Luke is still working on the logo. Hopefully, yep. by the time I post this, the logo is done so we can show the logo. I mean... Usually we're probably gonna have a drink in our hand when we end the 
yeah. podcast. So I guess we could just cheers it up. So uh, what we're is, doing this, this week is the Deer Shot Podcast, and uh, thanks for listening. Bushlight, bushlight, bushlight. Corona seltzer, not and, bad. And we'll catch you on the next one. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for watching. And we're off. <laughs> We're gonna we're gonna have <laughs> welcome to the normal nighttime.